This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. Then they asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And Jesus said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues. And there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and, you, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name. But not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Imagine that you are hanging out with Jesus. Jesus is with you, spends the week with you, goes on vacation with you. Maybe you take Jesus to the football game at Carolina or Clemson, show him the huge stadium and share your memories of being there. Maybe Jesus comes with you on a family trip to Washington, D.C., tours the majestic Capitol building and the White House with you. Maybe you want to show Jesus some religious sites. So you go to Charleston and see all the churches there with their tall steeples. And after you see all these things, you ask Jesus, Well, what do you think, Jesus? Pretty impressive, huh? And Jesus responds, Do you see this stadium here? This won't last for long. See these towering government buildings? They'll be reduced to rubble. See these fancy churches with their wood and stone and stucco? It's all coming down. I'm trying to get you to imagine what it was like for Jesus to tell the disciples and the crowds that the temple in Jerusalem would be destroyed. That the temple, the center of religious life, the heart of Jewish identity, this big, beautiful, crowning achievement would all be destroyed. Here in Luke chapter 21, it says, Some were speaking about the temple how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God. And Jesus said, As for these things you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. Why did Jesus say that? Well, for one thing... It was true. It happened. The temple was destroyed. It's a historical fact. In the year 
70 AD, the Roman armies marched into Jerusalem and destroyed the city and its temple. It was a cultural and theological crisis for God's people. A crisis that maybe Jesus had indeed foreseen and spoken about. But also, in an even bigger way, Jesus spoke about the temple as a way to talk about the temporary way of all things. In talking about the temple, Jesus was saying something about the value we put in so many things that are momentary and fleeting. This thing, this temple that was so big and important... Jesus says, it won't last. I wonder how that sentiment speaks to us, sitting here all of these years later. For us, what are the buildings, the achievements, the objects of wonder that we put value in, that we trust in, that won't last. We're talking about more than football stadiums and fancy monuments. We're talking about everything that we invest in that only fades away. Our big houses, our many achievements, even the churches we love. About these might Jesus say, as for these things you see, the days will come when these won't be left. All will be torn down. My first call as a pastor was to a church located in a rusty steel town along the banks of the Ohio River. Until I moved there, I had never even seen a steel mill, never even imagined that there could be buildings and structures so large and imposing, and at the same time so marked for death. You see, the steel industry then had been declining for years, and that difficult reality cast a shadow over everything. The latest sign of struggle came non, not long after we arrived. Another set of layoffs. Everyone not senior enough was let go. Then came a buyout by another company who sold to yet another. A few more years of just getting by, then the hot end was shut down. Those enormous vats and furnaces that literally built the steel that built our country turned off forever. It didn't make sense to leave those deteriorating buildings standing, so sometime later they tore them all down for scrap. And the offices that used to serve them too. There was an office there, a little brick, one-story place, where Ed, a member of my church, had been an accountant for 40 years. He ran the numbers for a business that could not possibly fail. And then it was gone. His office reduced to rubble. The church is still there, though just barely getting by. Maybe it will close its doors one day when nothing is left. Maybe the red bricks stained with ash and soot will come down. And in my mind, and in my heart, I tell myself, that has to be okay. Jesus said even the temple. The temple in all its splendor would not last. 
Jesus knew, you see, about the end of things, the way destruction would come, the way life gives way to death, gives way to new life. His message to those standing and marveling at the temple that day was, this temple will be destroyed, but you will not be. This thing, the things of this life, even those that seem most permanent, cannot last. But God is eternal. And God will keep you forever. Therefore, keep faith and endure all that may be to come. I know we worry about what will last and what we will lose. We worry about our livelihoods and those we love. We worry about our church and the future that is in store for believers in the Lord. But Jesus assures us that the future is in God's hands and that amid the changes and chances of life, God will remember us and guard us and keep us forever. Amen.